As a channel that focuses almost 100% primarily on video game collecting and retro video game collecting, I thought it would be fitting to talk about a video that I just saw the other day by my awesome buddies gaming off the grid, and that is the future of video game collecting. What's it gonna look like? Will it even be a thing? Mm, let's discuss. Johnny Jupiter, a human. Main event of the evening. First off, before I get started, I'm gonna give my generic answer no. I don't think video game collecting is gonna be the same in the future. And that's because one of the biggest reasons that every retro channel talks about all the time, and that's nostalgia. Our nostalgia is heavy for these video games that we collect, at least right now. And the reason I don't think it's gonna be that way in the future is because, well, the games that we get now, even though if we do spend time with them and they're good, there still is so many distractions going on around us in the world of playing video games in this current day and age. I don't think, for the most part, and I could say as a person who plays next-gen games all the time with an Xbox Series X right behind me, always playing next-gen games, even though you're in the game, you get the game, you download the game, you buy the game, whatever it is, there's distractions within that game that don't really keep you into the game that almost I don't feel like is gonna give you that same deep buried sense of love or nostalgia for a video game as much as you might think. When you put in a Nintendo game or a Super Nintendo game or a Genesis game or anything like that, you're in, you're in the game, that's it. There's no distractions, there's no download this, there's no DLC might be coming this, there's no patch updates this, and I'm not saying if these things are a bad thing or not, I'm saying as far as being invested into the video game, Nowadays, when you, when you download it again, like I said, or anything like that, you're in the game, but there is distractions. Not even just around the stores, around buying these things, you know, purchasing the game within an app. Yes, there's distractions all over. This is coming out, this is coming out. How about this game? How about this game? There's gonna be a sale on this game. But besides that, even in the very own game, there's distractions within that that's gonna tell you, oh, you might need to update this, or a, a pop-up that might say, oh, this person just hopped online, or whatever. I feel like within the games, within the actual games, there still is a lot of distractions that might hinder a little bit of that deep nostalgia feeling of being honed in and focused on a certain specific game, and that was it back in the day. Look at the little guy run. <laughs> As Tyler continues to be mesmerized and play this game, I just wanted to show you something else. Another point I want to bring up within collecting, I know this is kind of a sore spot, but I hate to say it and I've talked about it before and this isn't me casting shade on anyone or anything like that, but the collecting scene in general, not the same as it used to be at all. It's almost taken a huge drastic flip as to what it was before. And again, I have talked about this before in other videos, but we're specifically talking about collecting this time, so it only makes sense for me to bring it up again. The collecting scene, or even collectors that weren't necessarily in the YouTube scene, if you talk to them out in the wild, at swap meets, flea markets, anywhere, it was never about money or flipping. It was strictly about video games and our love for nostalgia and video games, and that's it. The collecting scene this day, at least the successful collecting scene, I hate to say it, this isn't casting shade at all. At all, at all, at all. Make that clear. The collecting scene has become the flipping scene. That's what's hot right now. I'm happy for those people. Very happy. Please let me make that clear. YouTube is not something that I even have any intention of at all trying to be a career in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to make it clear that the scene for collecting, what it is, talking about video game collecting going forward, it's just not the same. There's not that deep-hearted root for games for the sake of games like it used to be. That's just what it was. You collected, there was only one reason, because you loved old video games and you had so much nostalgia for them. Even the, the flipping scene back then, it was small, it existed, but it was definitely frowned upon, and I'm not even saying that I ever frowned upon it. I was friends with a lot of those channels and a lot of those people, and I still am to this day, even with the newer ones. But it was just different, and if you were around back then, Back in the olden days of retro video game collecting, that was it. You collected for the love of collecting. Okay, we're gonna need these. There's the controllers right there. You guys, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna film this because I wanna look through all this. 
I think one of the biggest, most obvious reasons retro game collecting or video game collecting going forward won't be the same is well because there's not much to the actual games as far as collecting, which is a physical thing, collecting them almost doesn't really make much sense. There's not really any reason to want to physically hold any of this stuff because not saying that we don't have attachments to these things, let's take a look at the game playing right behind me, a game called Deep Rock Galactic that I play so much much with all my friends, extremely obsessed with this game, talk about it way too much, play it with my family, my friends, my kids, everything. But even though I am loving this game and in fact building a sense of nostalgia in the future for sure towards this game, loving it each day, I don't see the desire in the future to wanting to collect this physically again. Because back in the day, as we've all said a hundred times, you got boxes, manuals, posters, artwork, a different feeling. It was a treasure to hold. Go box! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we can wear that. That doesn't look like clothes to me. Uh -uh. Is that a big surprise? Uh-huh. You didn't even know that was out. But nowadays when you get this stuff, even if this was available physically, Rarely do I have the desire to pick these things up because nine times out of 10, when I get these things with newer gen stuff, I'm just disappointed and it literally think to myself, if I can get this cheaper digitally, I'm for sure gonna do it that way. The biggest example I can think of is when I went out with Gabble recently and he just got a PS5 and we went out together to a Target to pick up Dark Souls physically on the PlayStation 5. Everything went well, we found the game, the lady rung us up and we had the game in hand. There it was. Almost $80 for the game, which is like, okay, that that's, that's what it costs to buy a video game. I guess that's fine if you want to say so, if you're collecting physically or even digitally. Things cost that much sometimes. We got it and we held it together outside of the store. We were like, yay! And there was a moment where we didn't even have to say anything. We just kind of looked at each other and we were like, oh, that's it? It's just a disc. E even though the game may be great or whatever it is, there is no major incentive for me to want to collect new things going forward physically. And that's just me, by the way, speaking. I know there's a whole talk about once these things get taken off the store, they're gone. You can't get them back, which may be true for the most part. And I'm not promoting emulation or anything like that. But really, anything that once it exists nowadays, sadly, there's pretty much a way to play it even if you don't own it physically. I know there's many things that, that get pulled and that you're like, man, I wish I would have had that physically because now it's gone. But in reality, looking at the world, not promoting this, there's usually a way to play it if you wanna play it and really desire playing in the future. Not saying it's right or even the right mindset, but it's usually an option. With that, I wanna bring up the clear future of gaming, maybe just not even retro game collecting or video game collecting at all but that's the Netflix style or whatever you wanna call it, video games. And I have to say for someone like me who obviously is obsessed with collecting things and owning physical items, toys, video games, even American nostalgia, different things like that, things like Game Pass is the most bittersweet thing in the world because I have said numerous times to all my friends, Game Pass is the greatest thing that's ever happened to gaming. I can say that if a thing like Game Pass was around during the Nintendo days, Super Nintendo days, 80s and 90s, I don't know if I'd have the same nostalgia for these things as far as video game collecting goes. Yes, I'd still have nostalgia for the video games, like I said, like I do, I'm gonna have with games like Deep Rock right behind me, but as far as owning them physically, the journey of going to the store, going to Toys R Us, being excited to pick things up, Best Buy, KB Toys, physically going down that journey of getting the physical cartridge, physical case, physical box, that's part of what plays into my addiction or a lot of people to wanting to find things and own them physically and collect them physically. Doesn't mean you still don't enjoy them, it just means you might not feel the same way about collecting them physically. And like I said, Game Pass, I really do believe this is the future of video games and I have to say for myself, again, as a collector, Game Pass, and they, this may be a whole different topic, has changed the way I play video games, at least in the current gen. 
I myself, well, I wouldn't say I can't afford, but I don't like to buy stuff at full price. That's just the way it is. I can't get myself to pay $80, $60, $70 for a game anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't have nostalgia attached to it from my past. So when Game Pass came out and really kind of honed itself in, which what it is right now, Ultimate Game Pass, being able to scroll through all these different video games, 200 some video games at a time, for something like 15 bucks, including the, the internet fees to play the games online, it's ridiculous. I know that it's crazy for a collector to be saying that, but when I see it, I go, I don't know if that's the way I want gaming to go, but then when I own it myself and see the games and I'm literally finding myself enjoying hundreds and hundreds of video games that I might never have picked up before. You know, I've had friends tell me, well, yeah, but it has a lot of these games and I know the AAA ones, but a lot of those ones I don't like. Well, in reality, if I really think about it, I would have loved to have something like that on the Super Nintendo or Nintendo back in the day. All these games that are being discovered as hidden gems now probably wouldn't have been hidden gems. We all would have known Vice Project Dune was a great game before we all found out 20 years after and became popular on the internet and other games like that. There's so many games that we're finding now like, man, people should have put time into this. And I feel like Game Pass is kind of helping me do that. I'm able to get all these different games and play all these different games I didn't even know about. Again, referring to this game, Game because just turned it on one night and my brother was like you need to check it out turn it on it's been amazing I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for a service like this so for me personally if I have to make some sort of final statement I'm gonna say that yes I'm always gonna be collecting things that I spent time with and really hunkered down with in my life that I actually enjoyed owning a physical piece of and I want to make that very clear is just because you don't want to own the physical version of it doesn't mean you don't have nostalgia for it and don't love it it just means that the actual journey and joy of having it physically might not be the same and for me going forward I don't see myself having any sense of nostalgia as far as pushing me far enough to want to collect these things physically in the future I think that's all been laid out in the past it was a different time way less distractions within the world within the video games within the consoles themselves which led to us being able to dive deeper into the games with the schoolyard talks and the video game magazines and all that. It was just a different time. I'm sure there will be nostalgia in the future and there will be video game collecting in the future. Of course there will be, but I just don't see it personally being as strong as it was for previous generations. And of course, let me know how you guys feel. Do you think in the future video game collecting will be much of a thing for these more future generation consoles, which are our current generation consoles? Or do you think you kind of more agree with me that yeah, it might exist, but definitely in a much less of a tone than what we have right now with retro video games. I appreciate you guys watching as always. And yeah, I'm in my living room. I didn't feel like setting up my game room tonight. All right, have a good one.